Hey, welcome back everybody. It's me, Elric Ferris, your host here on the motherboards.org YouTube channel. Feeling really squeaky clean today as I shave my pretty face. Now I know some of you guys out there were asking me to get a beard and let the hair grow, but hey man, my hair was like this long and I was feeling like a freaking hippie, man. I feel like I should have joined the Grateful Dead and shit. Anyways, I know you guys are here to take a look at the new HD 7870 card. Sorry for the delay, folks. I had to wait until one of the manufacturing partners actually got a card before I could bring you guys the full review. In case you guys missed it, check it out behind me. This is the Sapphire HD 7870. This is the gigahertz overclocked edition. You missed the unboxing, check that out. Now, the reason we're here all today, today we're here to take a further in-depth look at the card, show you the benchmarks, the price, and at the end, why you'd want to buy this card and stick it in your system. That said, without any further ado, let's rub, I mean jump, right in to the card. Let's start off talking about the design of the card before we even jump into the features. Now, even though this card doesn't use VaporX technology, they still have their own cooling solution. You guys can see there's two fans here in the front. There's a nice black plastic shroud covering it. This is all non-reference design by the people at Sapphire. This will actually keep the card running really, really cool. As we take a look at the side of the card, here we can see the two six pin power connectors. Now this card has a total TDP of 175 watts. Not bad at all. We'll move further along the side of the card. You guys can see right here is there's one crossfire finger. Everyone knows this card is based off the new 28 nanometer process. This is the big, big, big thing about these cards. Now this particular card has 1280 stream processors, 80 texture units, and 32 ROPs. The cards also overclocked in the core and memory. With the core clock being 1050 megahertz, it's a thousand on the reference. The memory clock is clocked at 1250 with 1200 being the reference. Now, this card also has a 256-bit memory interface. This is a lot better than the 7750 and 7700 cards that actually had a 128-bit memory interface, so you folks should like that. This card also has two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. This will help out a lot when you're trying to run Ifinity or when you're trying to run high frame rates or high resolutions. The card also features 160 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. The reference card only has 153.6. Before I jump into the rear I.O., let's just take a look at the back of the card. I happen to like the blue PCB. It looks pretty cool. I mean, a black one might be better in some cases, but that's really not that big of a deal to me. Now let's spin the card around and let's take a look at the rear I.O. This is pretty much the same I.O. that you're going to see any of the AMD-based cards. We've got two mini display ports, an HDMI port, and a dual link DVI card. So now let's do a little bit of head banging and jump right into those damn benchmarks. <laughs> Oh, shit, you're back. All right, so you guys have seen all the specs of this card, and now you guys have seen where its performance is at. This card performs anywhere between 560 Ti and a GTX 570, right at the marketplace that it's priced. Now, the reference design cards are supposed to come to market at about $349, but you can probably look for this card to be priced at around $20 to $30 more because it's a completely non-reference based card. Now, great things about this card, no more 128-bit memory interface. That's completely gone, even though it really didn't matter that much. I know a lot of you guys out there are going to be saying, hey, cool, 256-bit memory interface, back in the card. We've also got 
two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. So we know that this card will be able to address any of the problems that they were having before with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. So if you guys don't know out there, it was at the 1.5 gigabyte point that cards were having problems. Hence, you saw the memory not being able to be addressed enough in games like Battlefield 3 and why the three gigabyte cards all came out, including the GTX 580, three gigabyte, which we had in our machine, the beast. If you didn't see the beast, check that out here. So at the end of the day, what do you got? This card runs really good, but I think the really most supreme things about it are it's almost total silent running. The card runs almost totally cool. Even under maximum load, it's not even that hot. So that means you're gonna have plenty of headroom for doing overclocking, because one of the biggest problems and failures of overclocking is overheating. So when you go out and you install whatever program you're going to use, this card comes with Trix software. Trick software is pretty good stuff for overclocking. I know a lot of people out there use different stuff, including MSI's Afterburner. I use that as well, it works pretty good. But with the card running cool, you're gonna be able to go in there and tinker with stuff and have more room to push the card with a card running so cool. So what does it do? It's definitely perfectly placed. This card competes with the 570 and 560 and it's priced right in that same price range. It runs cool, it runs quiet, and it's available in the market everywhere. At the end of the day, I do have to say that this Sapphire HD 7870 gigahertz edition overclock card is an editor's choice. It's a solid card, it's new technology, and being silent is something I really like around the lab. I hate noise. See you folks back here on motherboards.org.